Today I would like to talk a little bit about different grinding techniques and my favorite grinding technique a little bit more in detail. I've been grinding like this for a while now and it's my absolute favorite version. My name is Tobias Hangler. I am an Austrian knife maker and trained metallurgist and I'm part of the development team of Apex Ultra. This is a knife that we entirely forged using induction heating. It's a Go My blade, it's going to be a bunker with a compound grind with a C grind on the one side, so it's an asymmetric grind. But first of all, we need to grind in the bevels, the two primary bevels, and I want those to be as even as possible. And there's a couple of ways of doing this. First technique would be freehand grinding. I used to do freehand grinding for everything for years. It is a very versatile style of grinding that requires a lot of practice to get the exact results that you want. For example, if I want to have the transition line between the forged finish and the primary bevel, at a certain point, it's gonna be very hard to get it even along the whole length and on both sides. Also, if I prefer to have like a strict angle of a certain I don't know, 3.5 degrees, freehand grinding will not make that very easy. The main reason why I personally stopped using freehand grinding is because it's very bad for your body. I'll show you really quick how I stand when I do freehand grinding and you will immediately see why that's not very sustainable if you're doing this as a full-time job. Because I will be standing like this. <laughs> So when you're freehand grinding, it's very important that you eliminate as much vibrations and wiggle room and get as much as sturdy of a grip as you can. So you will want to have your elbows and your hands as close to your body as you can and you will work very close to the grinder. That means that I have a very unnatural position that I will basically have to crunch my neck all the way down so I see what I'm doing and then I can guide the knife. Also, I have to support the knife against the moving belt. The belt is moving downwards and I constantly have to keep it up. So actually I have my fingers very close to the spine of the knife because basically I want to apply a pressure here but keep it at the same time from moving up. And you can get really nice results and you're very flexible with the grind. You can just switch sides, you can make it convex and all that or grind vertically. But I've ground off my fingertips over and over again and I got back problems, finger problems, especially as I'm always doing wet grinding. So in the winter time, it's four degrees in the workshop. I'm standing here like this, it's not fun. <laughs> Next up would be what's generally usually referred to as the push stick technique. So now we are using a work rest. We're gonna have the knife on the work rest. It is completely free to move. So we can work with the tips of our fingers or with a push stick so I can have a piece of wood that I actually use to control the pressure and to control the angle slightly. So typically you will want to start a little bit steeper, grind approximately to the middle and then you will start moving your bevels up and up and up, shallower and shallower until you are where you want to be. Now you can already see I stand much more comfortably. I stand further away from the grinder. I have the work rest which takes away the force that goes down and I can actually apply a fair amount of pressure. This technique still needs a lot of practice because you have no guidance of the angles. It will still be very difficult for you to get the same angles every time. It will still be difficult to get even grind lines especially like if you have a forged finish that you never want to grind into and you you're gonna grind through five different belts. It's gonna be tricky, you know? You cannot slip once. <laughs> but still, this is a huge upgrade. It's still very versatile. You can, you know, start making convex grinds on this if you're good. You can also use different backings. So you don't have to use a hard backing every time. You can use radiant platens. Or personally, I also like to use a sheet of leather in between the belt grinder and the steel. If I move to higher grids, that way I get a nice convex grind very easily. So that's one of the, these pieces of leather. It's just five millimeter cowhide. I'll just remove the table, slide this in here and I'm good to go. I don't usually do this on the rough grinding. I usually start at around 120 grit to put in the leather so I get slight convexity and I get a very nice even surface finish. I only recommend this if you do wet or mist grinding otherwise it's gonna heat up the leather very fast and it's gonna, probably gonna burn. I never tried but I assume it will. The 
The next technique that I would like to mention is some form of a guided angle. So you could clamp your knife on this grinder, for example, just at a 90 degree angle to some angle iron. I have a small support in the back, so it's just a piece of sheet metal welded to the bottom. I could clamp my knife here, and now that is in exactly 90 degrees to the work rest. On this grinder, I have the freedom to actually adjust the angle on the grinder. If you don't have that possibility, you can get one of the grinding jigs that do this for you. So there's more advanced grinding jigs, like I think TR Maker one makes one, or you can make one with yourself with a larger angle iron, where you basically have a screw that comes down here that adjusts the angle for you. You can always just get an angle measurement device and put it on there and see what your angle you're at. That way you can get very even angles. You can actually go for a specific angle that fits the performance that you're looking for. This will be much easier for beginners. It's one of the techniques that I teach in the bladesmithing classes because even if you're grinding your first knife you will usually get a pretty good result with this system it does take a little bit away from the whole like if you used to feel what you're doing this is a little bit more clumsy and might feel awkward to you what it's perfect for are shorter knives thicker knives anything that has a ricasso area where you have a steep transition so i especially like this for hunting knives steak knives anything that is a little bit smaller and that has a uh, pointed tip Next up is the knife grinding system that I personally prefer, especially for knives that have a wider bevel and are somewhat parallel between the spine of the knife and the cutting edge. It doesn't have to be perfect, even a Gyodo, if you have some like angle in, in the front, still gonna work. A Bunka is perfect because it's almost parallel. I'll show you why. On this system, we're not relying on a, on a specific angle, but rather we're relying on a distance between the spine and the front of the knife and the height of the bevel basically will give us the third length that will determine the angle. If you put the work rest further away, you will get steeper angles. If you put it closer, you will get shallower angles. You can always still measure that on the knife, but this jig helps you to keep the, the grind lines consistent throughout the length of the knife and to keep the angles exactly the same on both sides. So you will end up right in the middle of the knife. The beauty about this is now my reference surface is actually the spine of the knife. So I don't need any other clamping points. I don't need anything to be super perfect or I don't need any other perfect reference surface but it's only the spine that I'm relying on. If I push this here the angle is basically given. As long as my pressure point is in the middle of the height of the blade and in the middle of the belt basically my knife is geometrically defined and this hand will only do the axial movement so we're only going back and forth. You don't want to change the angle with this hand so I'm rather loose on this side. All the pressure must come from this hand. Initially I was always grinding like with my fingers here but when you grind 10, 20 knives you want things to move quick and you don't want your fingers to look like this. So <laughs> I eventually tried different methods and this is the latest prototype that Oliver Tobin and I came up with. The basic system was not invented by me. Benjamin Kamen had a similar system and other makers had influence in the design of this jig. I've been grinding like this for a while now and it's my absolute favorite version. Okay, let's get some grinds done and see how it turns out. You ready? Anytime you're grinding, there's gonna be a whole lot of dust in the air. So be sure to wear all your personal protective equipment, especially also your dust mask. I'm very careful with this. I also have air filtration systems, but you cannot eliminate all the fine dust. So definitely wear a respirator. For the sake of this video, and as I have to explain a lot, I will leave this aside for now. But even when wet grinding, there is actually a considerable amount of fine dust in the air. So be aware of that, it's not good for you. So this is as heat treated. I already have some bevels on there. We're gonna grind this now to approximately 0.2 millimeters behind the edge on the first belt. I'm gonna use water, I'm gonna use a mist cooler to keep the blade cool. And I'm also gonna regulate my speed of the belt so that I make sure I don't overheat the blade. Let's go.
As I progress in grinding, I always start a little bit sturdier, a little bit steeper of an angle that I want to. And then I make tiny steps and adjust the distance between the belt and this step here to move closer and get my grinds to where I want it. I've just been grinding around 30 seconds each side, so around one minute total time. And I came down from the heat treatment geometry of 0.7 to approximately 0.4 millimeters here. And we'll just take it down a little bit further, make sure I'm even, make sure I have the nickel line coming out on both sides, and then we'll move up the grids. quickly grind on a 120 grit belt the front of the knife and make sure that it rolls again nice because this surface is still scaled so I'm struggling to see if I got a consistent thickness or not. Also there might be 0.2 millimeters of decarburization at the edge so I want to make sure to grind that off. As I progress in grinding I always start a little bit sturdier a little bit steeper of an angle that I want to and then I just tiny make tiny steps and adjust the distance between the belt and this step here to move closer and get my grinds to where I want it. I've approximately ground for one minute and I'm already almost at the thickness. At the end of each grid, try to go lower on the pressure and make even strokes all along the blade so you don't have any... Is my phone ringing? Shit. At the end of each grid, try to Reduce the pressure, make long even strokes, so your deepest scratches are just a little bit less deep. Now I get an even thickness all around the edge. I'm right where I want to be and I'm going to switch to the next grid. Once you're done with your geometry, I would move up the grids. If this was a flat bevel that I'm going for, I would be basically finished with the geometry now. And now it's on to removing scratches and surface finish. For this knife, I'm actually going for a C grind. So I will need a hollow grind on this side. And I'm gonna show you how I do that. Got a rusty screw there. We're now gonna use a similar technique for the hollow grind. We're gonna lean the grinder a little bit back so we have access to this round. Now, our reference surface for the hollow grind is actually the cutting edge. So now we're referencing off this cutting edge as we want the S grinds to run parallel to this line. So now, with the edge down, here we have a little step again that's going to prevent us from going too far. Make sure that's clean. And then we're just going to tilt the knife towards the contact wheel. It's important now that our pressure point is in the right position. If we move up too far, the, mo the knife is not defined anymore geometrically. So the pressure point must be very low. You can also use a piece of wood in there and you need to make sure that your contacts of the cutting edge is right in the middle of the belt. So I'm gonna do an, a, uh, a compound grind. I leave this side untouched for now, and I only want this part of the knife with a hollow. Let's go. So that's what it looks like after the first couple of seconds. I start to get a shallow hollow grind in here. Now I'm just gonna try to get that wider and deeper into the side.
So you can imagine, we'll go deeper and deeper and we'll finish up these bevels with finer and finer grits of the grinding belt, but the technique is always the same. I got nothing more to say. <laughs> <laughs> As a skilled knife maker, you understand the importance of having sharp blades for your craft. But with so many different options for sharpening out there, which one is the fastest, the easiest, and the more consistent way of sharpening your blades? That's when the Tormek TH Sharpening System comes in. This innovative tool is specifically designed for people who want their knives sharp. It is equipped with a water-cooled, slow-speed grindstone that keeps your blades cool and safe during the sharpening process. Unlike other sharpening systems that can damage your knives, the TH water-cooled system ensures that your knives retain their quality and longevity. Additionally, the TH adjustable guide system makes it easy to achieve a consistent angle every time, allowing you to create sharp, precise edges with ease. The T8 is also user-friendly, so you can spend more time creating beautiful knives and less time sharpening them. It's the ultimate tool for anyone who takes their craft seriously and wants to take their work to the next level. Special thanks as well to Tobin Machines who do the BS1 belt grinders and make the universal jigs. Last but not the least is Clark Knives who make ready to grind Damascus billets and offers professional heat treatment services for knife makers. Thank you very much to all our sponsors. Please check the links in the description below. That was pretty quick, but I think we got like the basics and from here, I think the leap to the final product is not too far. What type of knife grinding do you actually do at the moment? And after watching this video, what type of knife grinding did you want to learn next? Let us know in the comments section. Check out this other video over here where Tobias talks about knife geometry for knife makers like you.